Okay, in this video, I'll show you guys how to come up with the formula for the integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared. And of course, because we're just adding these two things, you can switch the order as well. In my opinion, this form is more common, I think. <laughs> and in fact, in this video, I'll show you guys two ways to come up with the formula. The first way is to do tricks up. And we don't have to use the fact that the derivative of inverse tangent. And for the second one, I will use that fact along with u sub. But anyway, let me begin by the trick sub right here first. Notice we have the sum of two squares. Therefore, I will use the tangent situation. So I'll say x equals 2. And because of a square, I will just put a right here and then times tangent theta. And once again, the reason I choose tangent is because I know tangent squared theta plus 1 will give me secant squared theta. And that's how we can reduce two terms to just one. And from here, we do the usual business. I will differentiate both sides, so I get dx, which is going to be the derivative of this is a times secant squared theta, d theta. And now we just need to put everything, I will just say into this form right here, right? So this is going to be the integral of 1 over a squared is still a squared, and we add it with x is that now. So we put down a times tangent theta, and then we square that, okay? And is there anything else that I need at the moment? Yes, the dx right here, but you have to write it in terms of the theta and the d theta right here, right? A lot of students, they just don't put down the dx or the d theta or whatever, and that's a horrible mistake. It's just like when you're driving and you don't put on your seatbelt, that's really bad, right? So keep in mind, when you drive, you put on seatbelt. But when you integrate, you remember to write down a dx or d theta or d whatever. We are about to be in the theta world, so write this down. We have a times secant squared theta d theta, and that's wonderful. And now from here, we have a few things we can do. Work this out. Notice we have a squared plus, this is pretty much a squared times tangent squared theta. Both terms, they have the a squared. Therefore, I can factor out the a squared. And this is going to give me 1. And then the second term, we'll just add tangent squared theta. And then the most wonderful thing right here is that we know 1 plus tangent squared theta or tangent squared theta plus 1. This is nothing but just secant squared theta. So I'll write this down again. This is a squared. And I will write this as secant squared theta, and thanks to the identity. And we see that here we have x, well, here we have secant squared theta. What did I say x? I don't know. But. And then this right here, we have secant squared theta in the denominator. Therefore, I can cancel this out with pride. And then this is a over a squared, we can reduce the a, right? So I can say this is gone, and now we have a to the first power. And don't forget, we technically have 1 over a. So this is pretty much, let me take the 1 over a to the front of the integral. And then integrating, everything inside is just 1. So we have to integrate 1 in the theta world. And that's pretty much just 1 over a. And when you integrate 1 in the theta world, the answer to that is theta. But we have to go back to the x world now. And to do so, we have to look back here. We know x is equal to a times tangent theta, so be sure you look at this. And we are going to divide a on both sides. In another word, we know that tangent theta equals to x over a. In this case, we just care about theta. I don't care about like secant theta or sine theta. I don't worry about that. I don't need to draw a right triangle whatsoever. Just theta, right? Therefore, I will just take the inverse tangent on both sides. In another word, we see that theta is just equal to the inverse tangent of this now being the input. So we can say that the answer to this right here is equal to 1 over a and Theta is once again this, so I just write down the inverse tangent of x over a. And this right here, it's pretty much it. Right? And of course, in the end, we put a plus c right here. 
And later on, you guys will be using this formula a lot, especially when you are trying to integrate a rational function when the denominator is an irreducible quadratic, right? Anyway, let's look at another way to do it. And for the second way, I will be utilizing the fact that we know the derivative of inverse tangent. So let me just write this down right here. Well, back in calc 1, right? Back in calc 1, we know the derivative of inverse tangent x. This right here will give me 1 over 1 plus x squared. And once we know this fact, we know the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. This is equal to what? Just this, right? So the inverse tangent of x. And of course, in the end here, we put a plus c. OK, now for this right here, we have a squared. But what we know is just a 1. Therefore, we are going to do some algebra first to make this equal to 1. You have two ways to do it. One of the ways to do it is that you can just divide everything by a squared. And the second way is that I can just look at the denominator and factor out the a squared. And I will do the second way. So this is the same as a integral of 1 over. Let me factor out an a squared from both terms. So let me put that a squared down first. And Originally, this was a squared already, so that means I just have 1. But for the second term, I didn't have a squared. Therefore, I will have to put down plus x squared over a squared like this. And then here we have the dx. And then, of course, we have the 1 over a squared. a is a constant, so it's just a constant multiple, and I can just you know, factor out to the front. So I can write this down as 1 over a squared. And then this is the integral, and we just have 1 over. Now we have this 1 inside, in the denominator here, at this position. That's great. And then we'll be adding. And here we have x squared over a squared. Well, in order for us to use this, I want to just look at function squared. So I will actually open the parentheses, and then look at this as x over a, and then square, and then here we have the dx. OK? So this is really similar to that now. And in order for us to make things cleaner, or clear, I will do a u sub. I will let u equal to x over a, and to take care of this little constant in the denominator for the x over a. So I will let u, and this is just a regular u sub. u is equal to that, x over a. And of course, this is like saying 1 over a times x. And I can just differentiate both sides, so I get du equal to 1 over a, and we have to put down the dx. And as always, I like to show you guys the cancellations or the multiplication. So I would like to isolate the dx. I will multiply a on both sides. Therefore, dx is equal to a times du, right? Now, let's see what do we have. Here, we still have the 1 over a squared all the way in the front. And then we have the integral. 1 is still 1 over 1 is still 1, plus is still plus. But this right here is the u. So we have u squared, and then the dx is that. So it's a du. Now, we are in the u world. And notice, this is a, right? It's just a constant multiple. And we have 1 over a squared. So I can cancel this out. And we just have 1 over a. And we see that this is just 1 over a, and the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared in the u world is what? <laughs> Pretty much this, but you don't use x. Here you use u. So we have the inverse tangent of u. And in the end, u is that guy, which is 1 over a. I'll just put this down. That will be the final answer, x over a. And I like to just put on the plus c at the very end of all the work. And here you have it. This is, of course, the same answer. And you guys can leave a comment down below let me know which method, which approach, which way that you guys prefer. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new to my channel, be sure you subscribe. That's it.